Hey guys, I'm the Nostalgia Kid. I remember it and you should too. Definitely take some of the things I say about the pricing with a grain of salt. Also, I am not sponsored by any of the uh, apps or services that I am talking about in this video. Okay guys, so today I'm finally talking about the streaming wars. I feel like this is something that uh, just about every major YouTuber has talked about at least a little bit, but I'm going to go a little bit more in depth this time, unlike some of the other YouTubers. Now if you're wondering, yes, I am going to talk about the big ones like Hulu and Disney and HBO Max even, but before we talk about the big guys, let's talk about the little guys. Now if you're wondering what I'm talking about, well basically if you really look around the App Store, there's a number of streaming apps out there, not just like Hulu and HBO. Max, you also have apps like, I think it's called Pluto TV, you also have um, tons of like TV networks that have their own dedicated app, like the TLC app, the CW app, and a majority of those networks have a good number of like free content on there, some of it even includes ads, um, well some of them include ads, but still, uh, what I'm trying to say is that they have free content, and they have in some cases up to four to five uh, episodes of some of their newest shows on there and there's even a few news networks out there where if you download uh, let's say the ABC News app I believe it is then you can actually stream live TV and all you need is a basic internet connection so I'm tempted to say that if you uh, download a number of these apps depending on the type of content and shows you want to watch and uh, news you want to watch you could probably find a good little mix of like content among these apps. Yes, you'd have to be jumping to different apps, but it'd all be 100% free. Yes, there'd be commercials, but at the same time, again, it's free, and you don't have to pay for anything. And it'd be pretty much the same thing as like having regular streaming services. Also, it's anybody who doesn't know, a lot of newer TVs uh, come installed with a special antenna that picks up the free, like, uh, local TV stations, uh, in the, in your area. I can't show it on my TV, because my screen capture doesn't work that way, but there's actually a little setting on my TV that says antenna. Every time, sometimes I'll, like, hop onto that by accident, or for too long, and it'll just start showing the regular, like, local, like I said, airway, like, shows and, uh, stuff on there. So I have not personally used all the apps that I'm talking about, I haven't experienced their interfaces or uh, seen all the content they have, and like I said, a majority of them really only have the newer content. Most of them don't have the like legacy content, like uh, old TV shows, like obviously Friends or Seinfeld or stuff like that. Um, but still, it's like if you were just more concerned about newer stuff and newer shows, I want to say you might have find a good little mix out there free. Uh, with these apps, so definitely do a little bit of research before you just sign up for, I don't know, the most expensive like streaming uh, service out there. Okay, now, now that we have um, the free stuff uh, that I wanted to talk about out of the way, which I considered slightly more important, some of the bigger boys, let's talk about the big streaming services that are out there. Now, obviously the big one that everyone automatically thinks about is Netflix. Because they literally are actually valued, I, I don't know how true it is, but supposedly they're valued uh, bigger than Disney by like 5 to $10 million, something really a minute number when you really think about it. So it's like they are technically more valuable than Disney, but they also cancel probably way more shows than Disney. And the number of shows that they approve, like literally, I mean, I think South Park even had a joke about it where they call Netflix and they... The guy who answered was like, this is Netflix, your show has already been approved, where they're just basically, they don't really have a vision or a guide on how they're doing things, so they're just kind of producing content at an almost exponential rate, and just seeing what sticks within, what sticks and what doesn't, and if there's no public outcry, maybe they'll keep a show around, if not, they'll just sell it off to another service, so... Netflix is the big one. Um, supposedly it can be, I think it starts off at like $8 a month, but if you want the many screens, I think it's up to like 15 or $16 a month. Okay, now the next big one that I feel like everyone probably knows and talks about would have to be Hulu slash Disney plus slash ESPN. Why did I say them in that order? Because technically they're all owned by Disney and they're all in partnership with Disney. 
however which way you want to look at that. But yeah, if you just want Hulu Plus, you can just get Hulu Plus, and I believe it's only like six ninety nine a month for the basic. A little bit more if you want without commercials. And honestly, there's a lot of content on there. And I feel like the big difference between like Netflix and Hulu is that I just feel like there's more variety of content. Well, no, Netflix has a huge variety of content, but since they produce so much content out there, it's almost overwhelming. And in a lot of ways, I think some people on YouTube have even said it best. It's like there's massive numbers of shows on there, but he just keeps defaulting back to the same three or four shows that he's comfortable with. And I feel like Hulu kind of understands that, and that's why they kind of stick with just a handful of shows that you may be comfortable with. Yes, there's actually also a number of other, I guess you could say, more legacy content. Like um, uh, that one show, How I Met Your Mother. They have the entire series on there. They have that one show, Modern Family, that's on there. They have old episodes of I Love Lucy. Uh, they have old episodes of shows like Cheers. They, they, the list goes on and on. If you go on Hulu, odds are you will find something on there. A, so, a show, a movie, something you will probably like. And it will be more than worth your six ninety nine a month. Now, since I've already mentioned it, and since it's technically the same company, Disney Plus. I mean, this service, I mean, first off, it's incredible. It's just, I mean, there's so much con. I mean, it's almost, unfortunately, a Netflix situation. There's so much content on there. Where, well, no, there is a lot of content, but this is not a lot of content, if that makes any sense. It's almost like the Netflix, Netflix situation where I'm a little bit overwhelmed. But at the same time, there are a handful of shows on there where I comfortably will feel safe watching them. And in a lot of ways, it's almost like some of these shows are like, it's like I'm revisiting my childhood. They have a number of cartoons and movies and stuff um, that I saw or maybe didn't finish seeing when I was growing up. And they have almost the entire series. Well, I only say almost the entire series because for some shows, for some reason, they only have up to like a certain season, and then after that, the other episodes are just gone. I'm not sure if it's a situation of Disney uh, just maybe lost those episodes over the years, or if it's a situation of, well, technically a different network uh, bought the rights to, to the show after this season, or I don't know. It could just be a situation of some behind-the-scenes kind of stuff that maybe they're not telling us, that maybe they can't legally talk about, or it could just be a situation of, like, well, these episodes here or maybe considered insensitive, or maybe considered this. Um, but it's very minor stuff. Uh, there's actually, also, yeah, technically Disney Plus also includes, not just Disney content, but also Fox content. Like, pretty much, um, just, well, there's not a whole lot of Fox content on there. The biggest one would have to be The Simpsons. You have all 30 seasons of that show. And to anybody who's wondering, it's about a 12-day, 10-hour-long binge. That's at least, I believe, how long it is. It may be longer than that, but I heard somewhere it is. Um, but still, if you want to binge watch every episode of Simpsons, it's going to take you almost two weeks. So, hey, you got nothing better to do. Obviously, you can do that. <laughs> and it's also an interesting way to see how the show just evolved over the years. Now, obviously, it also includes ESPN Plus, but I'm not really a big sports fan. But still, I mean, they have the sports there if you want it. But it's also Disney Plus. And I think I should also move on to the next big uh, streaming service, which would have to be uh, HBO Max. Now, the big appeal to HBO Max would have to be one thing that I feel like has already gotten them sued a bunch of times at this point. But it's also getting Disney sued at this point as well. Uh, is that their big appeal is that they're releasing movies on HBO Max at the same time as it's in theaters. And, um, that really is a big appeal, because they literally had Kong vs. Godzilla on HBO Max, as well as in theaters, and then had the, they had the Snyder Cut, um, uh, really re-released on HBO Max, which apparently had its own following, and they're just all kinds of movies that they're releasing same days in theaters on their streaming service. At no extra cost, which I feel like is pretty impressive, especially seeing how Disney is charging people as much as $30 to watch their movies on the streaming service, and either on the streaming service or in big theaters. So, uh, HBO Max, obviously, I've already talked about a little bit here. They partnered with a number of networks where, if you go to their website, it shows an entire list of all the networks that they are partnered with 
They have some more edgier content. They have some comedy specials on there. They have tons of original shows that are just batshit crazy, off the wall just shows. They are really throwing for the 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 cheap seats out there. Um, obviously they have all the content of HBO on there. So all the HBO original content from like uh, Game of Thrones, Barry, just so much content on there. Um, just, it's a massive amount of content. Like, Disney Plus, keep an eye on them, is all I will say. They are Disney's big competitor. Like, Netflix is not a competitor to Disney. HBO is, okay? Okay, the next one, or technically two in this case, we're going to talk about, are uh, Funimation and Hulu. Now, I'm saying uh, two just because technically they are, as of the recording of this video at least, the same company. Um, they are both owned by Sony, and I believe Sony recently announced they're officially merging Hulu, I mean, uh, Funimation and Crunchyroll together, uh, into one service now, so I don't know if that means they're going to shut one of the apps down and, uh, move all the content over to the other, or if they're going to start a whole new streaming service and move everything onto there. But then I also don't, um, but to anybody who doesn't know, technically before any of this merger stuff happened, Funimation made a deal with Hulu to only put certain content on Hulu's streaming service. Um, and then Crunchyroll also made a deal with HBO to move some of their content onto HBO Max. So I don't know how any of this is going to affect uh, their deals with those companies as well. So um, we will see how things pan out. But still, uh, they're both uh, the best anime streaming services out there. And if you want to sign up for one, I believe they're pretty much the exact same price. I believe it's like $7.99 a month. So uh, if you want to sign up for one of them or possibly even both of them, I'd say give it a shot. Uh, if you have HBO Max, you'll be able to, you may be able, you can see some of the Crunchyroll content that's on there. And if you have Hulu, you can see some of the um, Funimation content that's on there. And then some of this content is also on both of the apps as well, so... Um, uh, if you want to sign up for one and just see how this whole Sony Funimation Crunchyroll deal happens, uh, I say go ahead. Worst case scenario is uh, you're going to get an email in the next couple of months saying, hey, we're shutting this service down. Uh, but if you click here, here and update a password or two, then we'll get you signed up in our new service. So odds are that's all that's really going to happen. But still, these are the two biggest anime streaming services out there. And uh, they're the best. So. If you want to sign up for one of these and you're a big anime fan, I highly recommend them both. Now, another service which I currently have, um, well, I actually have a number of these uh, streaming services myself, but uh, this one would have to be Amazon Prime. Yes, that's right, I'm including Amazon Prime in this list for some insane reason. If you're wondering why, well, it's because there actually are a number of interesting shows on there. I feel like... I don't know, I feel like they're in some kind of weird spot where they just have whatever they have on there. And, I don't know, I kind of like that they're doing that, it that way. And I also really like that they have the option to rent movies. So, um, I don't know, I just, I just, there's a lot of little things I like about them. But, Amazon Prime, um, you know, it's not a perfect uh, streaming service. They have a number of original content. Their interface isn't perfect, but like I said... You can rent movies on there, in many cases, like digital release of movies, uh, same day as in theaters to a certain degree. Um, and then, obviously, you don't just get the movie content, you also get their music content. And then, obviously, you also get the faster shipping with their content. Um, so, all around, I want to say that I think Amazon Prime is actually one of the better values on this list. Okay, and now that I've already talked about all, obviously I've talked about pretty much most of the gamut out there of uh, free and technically legal content. And I think I have said on this channel before that it is possible to watch content out there for, let's just say, less than legal means. But I'm not going to name any websites or apps directly because technically these apps and these websites are illegal. But it is also 100% possible to find, I want to say 90 to 100% of this content on certain websites and certain stream and certain streaming apps where it's not supposed to be there, 
but they have it available on these apps. Now the way these apps and the way these websites get away with it is that they are probably uh, doing some kind of like um, I guess you could say pseudo random IP addresses and basically just have um, servers that are just enough out of reach of like certain legal authorities to where it's like oh they have to consult with like a million different like police agencies and legal uh, situations to where it's almost impossible to fully like shut them down um, so you could go this route obviously I don't condone it a lot of these websites and apps they do have malware and like viruses hidden within them and if you click in the wrong spot you're going to have some very long conversations with your like um, internet provider and possibly even your bank about so many things but still um, it is possible to like just watch a majority of the content you want to watch without paying a penny and in many cases or for very little money like I said if you're gonna get any two streaming services on this list I would just go for HBO Max and Disney Plus uh, because that should be 80 to 90 percent of everything you would want it's only 30 bucks a month for technically both and I think that even is without all the ads so yeah I mean I would say just go for those two if you want to like stream almost everything you want so yeah that's uh, about all I have to say okay guys that's pretty much everything I have to say about the streaming wars I'm the Nostalgia Kid I remember it and you should too